Now, if you want to know one of the most difficult jobs in the political arena, then you'll be talking about becoming the Secretary General of a political party. Most of people who have handled that docket, they will tell you that given a second chance, they will not want to go back and be in that position. You're speaking about your Secretary General. Absolutely. And you're saying your Secretary General is a mole of... Absolutely, and they should be dismissed. Uh, where is this coming from? You know, mm. we brought Malala because we wanted him to checkmate Edwin Sifuna. Do we expect that uh, our acting Secretary General, Cleofas Malala, should be able to engage this uh, Edwin Sifuna? Mm. Mm. But now Malala forgets about his role. He begins to checkmate Musalia Mudavadi. He begins to checkmate uh, Moses Wetangula. Because if you go to Bungoma mm. and you are telling the people that Wetangula should show us uh, what he has brought here, we are struggling with whether the government has met the 30 percent that we promised the people of uh, western province or not uh, then you have an individual who is supposed to behave in a way that uh, you you you, uh, you are supposed to coil a very good statement in terms of explaining if we've made the 30 percent or not then you find this uh, uh, character uh, convening meetings and they uh, saying Musalem Davadi, please come and tell us uh, how many projects have you brought from national government? Mm. How many young people have you uh, taken to the military? He is behaving as if he has, is aware that maybe the government has not delivered much on people of Western Kenya. It is dreaded. It is something that is making you to, you know, create an enmity, life threat and center. It is not good at all. Let me take you back a bit. You look at the Jubilee Party, one person who suffered and who actually knows exactly what it feels to be a Secretary General, that person is none other than Raphael Tuju. And then the same guy, he comes and accuses us of not following procedure. It's like somebody comes and steals your clothes and then accuses you of being naked. So that is exactly what Tuju is doing. He stole our clothes and now he's telling us, why are you naked? He knows because he's the one who took our clothes. He really felt it. In fact, he was the one who really saw the real extent of what it means to be Secretary General. When you come to ODM, it is now the hotbed of all that you can say about the experience in being a Secretary General. Edwin Sifuna is finding it very easy because there is a stipulation or a structure that ODM party has had since time immemorial. And so that structure cannot just be messed with. But you look at all these other smaller parties like UDA, it is a tough job. It is not easy. And so I was giving that to bring us to what I want us to discuss today. You know, Cleofas Malala is in trouble. You know, Malala is the Secretary General. He was just brought the other day. And it is not the first time that we are talking about him being in trouble. He has faced kind of good turbulences <laughs> since he came into that docket, okay? And this one now is going to appear as the, the very ultimate one that is going to test his uh, kind of prowess to handle that docket perfectly well. So they are saying that um, Malala is appearing to be operating in a very dubious way as the Secretary General. In fact, he is coming up with uh, structures that are not pro the members of the party. They are, they are, they are kind of trying to see him that he is not for the interest of the party. So to put it in a simpler term, they are thinking that Malala is being used by an external force that is not being seen to mess the party. And they have not been able to identify this force, but they believe that there is something actually using Cleofas Malala to mess the UDA party. In fact, if you are talking about um, messing the UDA party, in fact, right now we need to um, actually remind the UDA members you know, if you talk of um, a party that is going to kind of see the shortest lifespan, then you'll be talking of UDA party. Because I was looking at that conversation and I was seeing the reactions. Because, you know, Millicent Omanga posted that update and she was kind of trying to be very angry at Malala based on whatever Malala did and she did not take it lightly. And a given number of other, you know, leaders in UDA also took matters up in arms with Cleofas Malala, based on how Malala rest restructured the, the secretariat 
okay so they did not take it lightly but then when you look at the conversation uh, how people are reacting and you try to you, you know kind of try to sample the the responses you will realize that even the people all right who are uda members who actually voted for uda are now saying that we don't need even to hear that there is wrangles in uda because we don't even even know that uda still exists so meaning kwa ground vitu ni tofauti it is only the leaders that are fighting at you know the party structural level but kwa ground vitu ni totally different i think uda is going to go into the ditches that the mother jubilee went to you know right now jubilee is really trying to revamp itself the only advantage that it has is because you know it is the only party that is kind of aligning well with the gamer community that if they were to talk about a party of their own they will go to jubilee as opposed to uda uda is not having any identity so the identity of uda cannot be substantiated it has been lost so when i was looking at that conversation you know it brought out very many things first of all it confirmed very well that even the people who actually stood well with the uda party are now distancing themselves from the uda in fact they are fearful even if you try to engage them you bring a conversation so that they get involved they run away from it so meaning even if they call for election they're not going to have a seamless you know activities and that is one of the recipes for everything going to be bungled up you know they are going to mess up things further so uda we can now say that it is dead okay it is not a party that can stand the test of time and in 2027 you know william ruto must be very serious not even serious but very careful on the kind of formation that he's going to have if he's going to revamp the uda party he must look at who and who are going to come on board otherwise if he doesn't take keen interest in ensuring that the structure that he wants comes to be for the UDA party he's going to be messed this vote hapa hata mimi kama party leader hakuna mtu amenichagua ndio mimi niko tu hapa rigiji yako area tu hivi hivi hawa watu wote hata hii malala sijui recess hata sasa anasema asante sana nimepatiwa nafasi lakini wenye chama wajasema sasa watakuja kusema you know that at that time we were thinking that there is something that Rigadi Gashagwa is doing secretly to undermine the development of a certain section in the UDA and at the same time we were trying to insinuate that maybe president Ruto is also coming with his motives okay to align the party but when you bring everything together you know if they don't harmonize things if they do not align things i think UDA might not even reach 2027 they might think twice so if you are looking for an alternative of UDA right now, if you're a UDA member who has been disgruntled and you are so much demoralized, I think you can cross over to ODM, all right? Because it's the only party that has stood the test of time. It knows exactly how structure can be maintained and to ensure that whatever is said as a party, they move with that you know, formality, they move with that uh, unanimity, and then they bring up an outcome which is representing the face of the party. Or what do you think ladies and gentlemen i'll see you next time have a great time